third quarterly slush pile. Um, we have a really terrific episode coming up for you today. The Paint and Brag quarterly slush pile um, was created so that we could share our editorial process with you. Uh, we take our time, but we have a democratic editorial policy that we stand behind. And you're about to um, be part of it with us. Welcome. Yay. Hello, hello. Um, and the us today is me. <laughs> It's so funny because I do always start with me. And I feel stupid <laughs> every time, but I always feel like I'm already talking. So no. I should just it's keep like the they, mic. They say that on airplanes. It's like you have to put your face <laughs> first and then the rest. Right, right. <laughs> that must be what it's about. Um, so I'm Kathleen Volkmiller, and I'm co-editor of Paint and Break Quarterly and director of the graduate program in publishing and Marion's best friend in the entire world. Universe. And <laughs> I know you're already hearing your her voice. But ladies and gentlemen, Marion is right here, right here next to me. We're even sharing a mic. Yes, we because are. when she's around, I gotta have a hand on her at all times. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, it's so good to be grabbed by you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Sounds a little fresh. Sounds a little fresh. This is Marion. I'm so glad to be sitting in the studio with the gang. Um, I uh, co-edit with Kathleen, um, and I direct the writing program at NYU Abu Dhabi. And inshallah, you all come for a visit, right? Now that Kathleen's mm -hmm. been there, I want her to come back and I want to bring all of PBQ. I figure I'll just put that in the world. I think the entire team should come to mm -hmm. NYU Abu Dhabi. That'd so be amazing if we came out Let's once. make that happen. Let's just make that happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I am bouncing. Manifest. The yes. Yes, let's manifest that. Um, I'm bouncing the ball over to my left and saying hello to... Tim Fitz. Yay. I'm the author of two short story collections, Hypothermia and Go Home and Cry for Yourselves. I teach here at Drexel University, and I teach creative writing at Penn State Brandywine, and I teach creative nonfiction and fiction at Curtis Institute of Music. And I teach at Temple <laughs> University. I teach this here and there and that there yeah. and this here. Yeah. Also this here <laughs> and that there. Just keeps coming. And that is Joseph. Hi. Hi. Joseph. I'm Joseph Kent, student at Drexel University, snarky co-op of Kathleen Volkmiller and Drexel Publishing Group. <laughs> Call you snarky. I don't know. I like that though. I think that's I an image I would. Cultivate. Let's cultivate yeah. that. That would be the first adjective that would come to mind. John described me today as panache. Nice. Yes. John, John Barger. Oh, in an email? Yeah. Huh. I'm going to have to dig in what the context of that was. Uh -huh. That's very interesting. <laughs> um, so, uh, Marion is here, and um, our loyal listeners might remember that we, I was in Abu Dhabi, like Marion mm -hmm. referenced, mm -hmm. and um, time gets very scrambled, and Marion always says that she's upside down, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's not the upside down. That's not a change. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's just <laughs> upside down, right. just physically herself, yeah. all by herself. And um, <laughs> we are uh, constantly in different time zones, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. one of us is drunk and the other one's waking up. Yep. Or, <laughs> 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 that happens a lot. Or at least <laughs> at least uh, one's having coffee and one's having wine. That yep. happy, fre frequently happens. So we're happy to be in the time zone today. But um, yes. we... Uh, got these most amazing watches mm -hmm. that kind of fly in the face and make fun of um, our need to see what time it is. Yep. Like, how, how do you know when you're hungry? Well, maybe when you're hungry, not when it's noon. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah, and so they're gorgeous. It's, it's, and you'll have to remember to remind me of the name of the jeweler, yeah. but she's got these um, stretchy bands, right, from the sort of like traditional watches. But inside the face, inside the mechanism is, is sparkles and fairy dust and awesomeness. So what I love about mm -hmm. this is like, oh, what time is it? Who gives a shit? <laughs> it's what time? It's sparkles. Time. It's sparkly it, time. It sparkles and fairy dust is what's it's happening. A little bit of right fairy dust smash. Yeah. So we'll put the link up. The um mm -hmm. the artist's name is Marissa Lombardo and Marissa the Lombardo. um the place is called Artemis. Uh so we'll put I a think link it was, up. Um, she takes Artemisian or something Artemisian? like that. Like uh, a play on Artemis or something like that. Okay. Sort of uh, yeah. together. We'll put the link up. Right. So she takes antique watches mm -hmm. and pops the face off. 
and they're pretty damn cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so now Marin and I, the whole point of this, sorry, sorry, I should have said this part, is now we will be in the same time zone. That's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Marin does time. What All the time. time. Exactly. That's exactly. really why, that's really why we did this. Why we did sparkles. <laughs> it's sparkle time for both of us, no Indeed. matter where we are. Indeed. So, okay, enough shenanigans. Mm-hmm. We have uh, two fabulous poets uh, to discuss today, and, um, and we're going to start start off with Rosemary Kitchen. Yes, I want to read How to Cauterize, and this is by the wonderful Rosemary Kitchen. How to Cauterize. Pack with clove oil and minced garlic, dress with poultices of peppermint, a tincture of myrrh. Count the beats of your pulse with the underside of your tongue pressed against the opening. Count the seconds since he went. Let stale air whistle through cracks like the tooth you chipped on embroidery needles that night you patched pants to wear on a first date. Try to forget the taste of powdered bone and fluoride. Drill bit between your lips. Ask the god who is dentist what you reach inside my skull and make me sparkly again. Count the parts of the skeleton you can clean. Tilt your head beneath the spigot of sink. Drink. Drink and drink. Oh, thank, thank you, you Rosemary thank Kitchen. You, thank, you, thank, thank, you, thank, thank you, Rosemary you, Kitchen. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful reading. And now we have the title of the episode. Which? Sparkly. Sparkly. It's you sparkly. were talking about our sparkly That's watches. right. Sparkly. It's true. It's, it's, it, I know. I like the harmonic We didn't even plan that. that. I like how that happened. <laughs> we did not And look, and it's powdered it. bone and fluoride. It's like pixie dust and sparkles <laughs> is what's what. <laughs> Sorry. But what an image at the end of that mo- of this poem in the third in the third mm-hmm. stanza. Mm-hmm. Um or is it the fourth stanza, right? No, it's the third, third stanza. Yeah. It's the third stanza of the of the piece where um she invites the dentist as God, right, into the into the conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Mm. Love poem, survival poem, both poems. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What's the wound? Yeah. Count the seconds since he went. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what I the, the, one of the things that Rosemary does really well is like, you know, here's the terrain, the common terrain, the sort of brokenhearted terrain of this. But the surprises of let air whistle through the cracks, like the tooth you chipped on embroidery needles the night you patched your pants. Right? Like there's a there's a way it sort of tumbles into a kind of ir- irreverence um, in that specificity. Mm. Kind of dig it. Mhm. I love the um, that image, the tooth you chipped on embroidery on embroidery needles that night you patched pants to wear on a first date. It really shows us the level of anxiety this person lives their life under. <laughs> because you have to be wound right. pretty tight to chip your teeth on the needle. Mm-hmm. But and, and I I love seeing that instead of being told how anxious this person is, mm-hmm. and obviously. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of anxiety in it with <laughs> ask the God who is dentist, won't you reach inside my skull and make me sparkly again? This person is always anxious and all and, and there is no God who can make her sparkly again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and all these images, the powdered bone and fluoride. I'm not really wild about the drink and drink at the end. And I would really not be digging the sparkly if there was a possibility of her being sparkly again. <laughs> but since there's not, then I like it because it's something <laughs> far off that she can't even reach. And I'm not even sure if the person in this poem really even knows, would recognize sparkly if if she had it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I like the word sparkly because everything else is kind of yucky. Yeah. You know, make yeah. me sparkly. Mm-hmm. Sparkly mm-hmm. is so incongruous with... The other, I mean, not that, not that olive oil on its own or, <laughs> or mm-hmm. minced garlic are, but like all of those things together right. kind of makes you sick in that first paragraph, right? Yeah. yeah. You really want clove oil, minced garlic, peppermint, and a tincture of myrrh. Like it all smushes together and I'm yeah. like, uh, right? Well, I, you know what? I think that's, 
the sort of like nausea and anxiety, right? Like I want to pull those two things together because Tim, one of the things I love about the way you you talk about poems is the way you're able to name the emotion, right? That is the motive, right? For these lines, right? And it's it's a, mm-hmm. like a real pleasure to hear you call this out as like part of the character of the speaker is this deep anxiety, right? Um, and I think what that unfolds for me or unlocks for me is the way the simile works, right? Which is it starts with this, like the poultices and the peppermints and this this stuff that mm-hmm. like is meant to soothe, right? But let the stare out, stare out, stare air, I can't do it. Let <laughs> stale air whistle through cracks. And then you get like the tooth, right? And it's off that like that the whole tail end of the poem spins, mm-hmm. right? It's like this memory, right, yeah. of this moment with a dentist feeling desperate. And, like, there's this, it, it spins into a kind of overwhelm, right? Yeah. And I think the delight of the description is pegged to or it hinged is on the overwhelm that goes to the anxiety that you just freaking named. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You. That's what I mean to say. And, you know, you just said the overwhelm. I love the hyperbole of this. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I already can't stand going to the dentist. I don't know who oh, enjoys it. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. a drill bit between your lips <laughs> seems so much more intimate than, than in your mouth. So, you know, like yeah. between your lips, I feel violated reading it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And and reach inside your skull. That is what a dentist yeah. is doing. They're reaching inside yeah. your skull. But I never thought of it that way. It's horrifying. Thanks, right? Rosemary <laughs> Kitchen. Thank so, you so much for that you image, know, even, yeah. even the air is stale. Yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm opposite world of Tim and I'm so happy to be cleansed with the drink 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 you know um, at the end that that all works for me you know count the beats of your pulse with the underside of your tongue and and you know there's hyperbole too and count the seconds since he went Mm -hmm. you know there we've heard like you know it's been 27 days or something but like the seconds Mm-hmm. And it's nice that that's all we get of him. Just yeah, that line. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't want to hear anything else. I know, I know. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You've been wounded. I get it. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, yep. That's all yep. we need. How to cauterize. We already know there's a wound. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. It's a, I do like the directives, too, that this is a how-to. Mm-hmm. I, do mm-hmm. you like that? Mm-hmm. I also love, uh, the thing I love the most, I think, is the uh, the name of the poet, the, how it match, I love the, the Rosemary the How to Cauterize is by Rosemary Kitchen. It's such yeah. a it's such a warm and inviting name. I know. Yeah. And then you I was get, actually you ask get her if powdered I could bone it. and fluoride. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But this yeah. but the fact that it's this these directives, the sort of litany of directives and the fact that it's a how to, mm-hmm. that it feels like at the center too is this impulse to self soothe. Right. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. how to like it's a direct address to the self, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right? right. Which is part of the sort of like the way the poem feels really contained mm-hmm. um, and, and nicely structured. Yeah. I like that word for it, too. Contained because it, it's just really well crafted. She could have she could have went crazy and it would have been a mess. You know what I mean? Even with the hyperbole and where we're gone, all these separate Im- disparate mm-hmm. images, and then it still really hangs together, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Hmm. So what do you think? Wow. Yeah. More to say, or, or do we feel like we can move? I know I'm ready. Ready to vote? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Hang on, Rosemary Kitchen. Here we go. All we right. are all four of us around this table. <laughs> Which never happens. Nobody's <laughs> Nobody on the phone. Right? From, so I, from I'm, eyeing up, I'm eyeing up some hands here. Ready? So on three. <laughs> One, two, three. Shoot. And it's a unanimous yes. Yes. Woohoo, woohoo, Rosemary woo-hoo. Kitchen. Drink and drink. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get silly for a second. How about what? Not only did we have glitter in there, Marion, but do you remember when we drove to AWP in Baltimore and I 
changed pants. Sorry. And I, I'm cackling in the phone. Sorry. Or in the phone. In the, the microphone. Phone. <laughs> I hemmed a pair of pants on the way. Oh, you guys, In the car. Thelma and Louise. I'm driving. Right? <laughs> She's in the, in the passenger seat hemming pants. And we're like, you know, planning the way we overtake. <laughs> Game on. Yeah. That was only, what, 20 years yeah. ago? <laughs> mm. oh. But it doesn't matter because what time is it? Sparkle time. Sparkle yep. time. There is no such thing Maybe as a that's why zone. I love it so much. Mm-hmm. There's no aging either. How old are you? Sparkly. How old are you? <laughs> Glitter. <laughs> um, okay. We have Jessica Pierce up next. And I think Joseph is going to read for us. I am. Yeah. Great. Yay, so Joseph. this is Without by Jessica Pierce. I can say it now without shaking, without crying, without falling down. It still grabs my throat sometimes, but it will release its white knuckle grip if I whisper tenderly, you are true. It does not need me to lie and say it is beautiful or that through force of habit it has become exalted. And when I can't speak, it has given me permission to carry it beneath my bre- between my breasts against the grief that has become cellular. Mm. Almost just something else to carry through this fraught world. Nice reading. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, 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 it. What is it? It it is so, such a wound, such grief, such a thing. This unnameable thing that gets named 20 different ways, but not named. Almost just something else. Yeah. You know... Those beginning lines, I can say it now without shaking, without crying, without falling down, feel very much on the nose Yep, and and blatant, mm-hmm. right, in, in the raw grief and, and almost made me be a little bit not engaged. Yep. But then when I get to, it still grabs my throat sometimes, and, but it will release its white knuckle grip if I whisper tenderly, you are true. Mm-hmm. Now I'm totally in. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the you, right? Like the sort of anthropomorphizing of this pain, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, if I whisper, it is true. It's you. It's a direct address to that loss. Right. To that pain or to that unsayable thing. Interesting maneuvers. Mm-hmm. But then it's always just something else to carry through this world. Like, finally, it becomes toothless, right? Its grip yeah. releases, but it's never gone. The grief that has become cellular. Mm-hmm. It's just a part of you. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's that. Yeah. Right. And that's the truth. See, and truth is the word, right? Like, it, that just feels like the magic a poem can do, right? Sort of naming a kind of emotion, a particular valence or a partic- particular kind of grief experience that, you know, we, we know it when we hear it. And when we hear it proclaimed like this, it's like, yep, 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 that's true. That's real, right? Yeah. But I do wonder about the on-the-noseness on the at the top of the poem. Like, does does that push you out um, or as Jennifer L. Knox would say, does it buck you off the poem? I right. loved that. By I the thought way. that was yeah. great. I was going to stop the show for that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Knox uh, is a guest on uh, two episodes now of the podcast, mm-hmm. and she used that phrase, which I'm stealing. Yes, as well. Yes, mm-hmm. so much to steal. Lots to steal from her. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting how, like, the title is without and, like, those first three sentences, the first two lines are, you know, she can say it now without shaking, without crying, without falling down, but then she doesn't say it. Like, Mm -hmm. this it throughout the rest of the poem. Mm -hmm. Like, she never names what this it is, and, you know, it's just her wrestling through how she deals with this it and, like, what this it is, how she feels about it, and, like... How she's not like it's I get this so with the you are true thing I get this sort of image where she's with this it like this feeling this pain this grief and she's not just like ignoring it she's not trying to act like it doesn't exist and pretend that it'll go away she's like okay like I have this pain and I'm with it and I'm gonna deal with it and you know I'm gonna wrestle with this pain and we're gonna like keep going and 
figure out whatever this it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just if there's something about that, like the way that it is absolutely present and simultaneously absent as a way of indicating the way the grief, the wound, the trauma recedes, but never disappears, right? Mm -hmm. So that it's like the... You know, it's almost like the goal of, of psychotherapy, right? Where yeah. you become like you're able to embrace your damn wounds, right? As mm-hmm. the, a source rather than something to be ashamed of, right? Um, so that I think that that goes to this to the trueness, the truth of the emotion that this that without is circling and naming without naming. Yeah, just it's pretty art. that. So that goes to the artful on the artful side of the equation, right? Which charms me. I'm in. I kind of am feeling the other way, mm-hmm. where I <clears throat> am hungry for some images here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm kind of a sociopath in that way, where I just don't <laughs> care about how people feel anymore. Oh. You know? <laughs> I just don't. Well, I, 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 I don't just, think that's true. I, I, I'm sorry <laughs> to put words in your mouth, but... The kind of reader you are, you gain pleasure doing a little bit of work figuring out what that emotion is rather than being, like, pinged with it, told what it is. I guess, yeah, the image is what I really yeah. need. And yeah. um, <laughs> and I don't, I don't, yeah, obviously, I don't not care. I'm assuming the poet, <laughs> the poem is not also about Jessica Pierce. I mean, obviously, yeah. I, I hope she's happy and healthy and all is well. Right, right, of course. About everybody. And of the course. person and the poet poem too but I just I guess I just especially I guess in the past few years I mean it seems like fear is the is the subject of the day every day now for the past Mm -hmm. few years Mm -hmm. and I I wonder a little bit about that and if Mm -hmm. it's I think it's not I mean if you look at right history it's not any more fearful than any time has ever been it's just we're not used to the types of fear yet and we're not sure how strong of a hold we we have on the the pleasures that we have these days? Um, are we not we're not really sure where fear and desire is going to be in the next year or two. So everyone's a little bit on edge. So I feel like I also need images a, a little bit more than I used to, and I find myself kind of hovering in a weird headspace these days because you don't you can't rely on on anything anymore you know nothing is what they say it is on the internet nothing so you really kind of don't know where you're headed day to day so Mm. it's not that i i do i do like things that are happening in this poem and i do you know i think the language is great and i think the sentiment is great and i think it's not hitting me over the head it's there's just a little void in there that i'm yeah. I'm hungry for. You know what? You're making me remember a conversation that Kathy and I had maybe, oh, I don't know, a million years ago? Or who <laughs> can tell? Maybe glitter ago. Glitter right? ago. Glitter ago. It was. Yeah. It was about um, poems that make references to popular culture, right? Oh, yeah. And poems that refer to uh, like hyper contemporary things. What's their shelf life, right? Mm. So, and yeah. I say that because if I put my thumb over without and say, let's call it inauguration. <laughs> right. right that poem mm-hmm. still works right but it works very specifically tagged to right. a political moment right but with the word without there now it's timeless like it, it it's sort of like decontextualized <laughs> and I'm, I'm usually down with the this the, the the way that images do the work of conveying ideas but without the image images Right. The poem lifts off and is decontextualized. And I, I kind of like it for that free floating nature. The which degree is strange. can be anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, I don't want to say just I did say just a lost love <laughs> or a death or number 45. Right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right. It could be anything. Right. Which is mm-hmm. so not my usual theory of making references in poems, like right. I like specificity. I want it to be historicized. Right, right. right? But I mean, she obviously intends yeah. this amorphousness right. to this right. it. She wouldn't use it, 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 unless she wants you to fill in that blank. Yeah, or with, without, without, without. Right. right. In the, I mean, yeah, and that, and that gives her permission to call it without and not mm-hmm. give it something more concrete. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the fraught world made me think of the same thing. Is this a political poem and not a hyperpersonal yeah. poem? Right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
What do you think? We're looking at it? each other, like kind of like dogs. You know, like a dog just keeps turning. It's a the curious head puppy head, 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 head turn. Yeah. Curious puppy Everybody's head. doing this simultaneously. So, yeah. Just so you know, we can take a video <laughs> for I it feel later. Like, I feel like that's all I do now. <laughs> it's yeah, just curious the, puppy face. I have no idea. I walk. I'm just walking aimless <laughs> <laughs> these days. My head cocked one way or the other. Wait, is that so? Then, is that the Scooby Doo sound? Like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We really should have um, Joe Zang our sound engineer take a photo of the four of us around Indeed. this table before right. we leave We're today. making puppy dog faces of curiosity. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sure. All right. Let's do it. All right. All right. But I think let's also vote. Yep. Yeah? I think we are ready. Okay. One, two, three. Vote. And it's in. Woohoo, woohoo. Go, Thank you, Jessica Pierce. Four without. So, so far, we are two for two. And we have another poem by Jessica Pierce here. And it's called How to Take What You Want. How to Take What You Want. And another thing, as he splits open a warm loaf of bread, pleased with the crackle of crust. This may I business. Get to the point. Take action, damn it. And why tell me to do things and then say, Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. Take a number. Thank you. Stand there. Thank you. His father got to the point. For weeks, he would watch his neighbor's peach trees rooted in the dirt of crumbled gods and goddesses. Waiting until the fruit stunned with ripeness, he would take it. He would eat it. The first time he went apple picking, he ignored the abundant apples, found a walnut tree on the other side of the fence. He pointed, smiled. After walking 500 miles to escape the enemy army, after raising his children while his wife's heart and mind failed, after crossing oceans, after loaf after loaf of coarse brown bread, he had no interest in denying himself such pleasures. I spread apricot preserves on my piece of bread. He dips his piece in fragrant olive oil the grass of his childhood unfurling beneath our feet. And then my baby runs towards us. Hold me. No, please. No, may I. And he grins as he reaches down for her. That's how it's done. Nicely read. So our readers will be interested. Our listeners will be interested. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's hope we have readers and listeners. Great. So you, audience, you, dear audience, (laughs) will note, um, if you look at this poem on the on the page, the use of italics, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. it's and it's striking the way that Jessica does and doesn't use them. So some like so at the end, right? The um, you know, hold me is an italics. No, please is an italics. No, may I is an italics, right? So there's this dialogue that's sort of captured there, like the the real dialogue between the child and the the man of this, right? Um, at least I imagine that's that that's who's saying the you know no I'm not going to hold the child right uh, that is not how I read that part at all right and he grins as he reaches down for her so he is reaching down for the child after this yes no right you know but in the beginning I read it entirely differently <laughs> whoa okay go ahead. I don't think anybody says no or anybody says please she's just saying no please the child doesn't say mm-hmm. please hold me the child doesn't say. No, she says, hold me, and then and then she's being corrected. I, I did no, not I see that. I don't oh, either. So it's like, she runs up to us, hold me, no please. Like She you know, doesn't say please, she doesn't no please say may there. I. There's no may I. Right, she's following That's Grandpa's directive. Oh. Yeah. In the beginning, Grandpa says, don't Oh, I ask see it. I see what you're doing. Yeah, I see yeah, what you're yeah, doing. Yeah. Right, so it's like, the kid run says, runs up and says, hold me. With no please, with no, no may I. Exactly. And he grins as he reaches down for her. And goes, that's, that's how it's done. done. Got it. This oh, baby knows God. how to take what she wants. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no bad. I said thank you. Uh, <laughs> at least she didn't say sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> so we were funny. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, Hashtag sorry, not sorry. sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, that. Thank you for clarifying the end of that. And it, but for me, I think part of the boy that that really helps me with the way the italics work. Right. <laughs> so it runs towards yep, us. Yep, hold yep. me. No, please. This may I no, business. No, may I. Get, yeah, yeah. Look at the beginning. This right. may I business. Mm-hmm. Get to the point. Mm-hmm. That's. 
grandpa talking. Right. Right. And another thing, right? So I, right. the way the poem opens, it's funny. It's like I, I want the italics to be in the dialogue, not right. for emphasis, right? Mm-hmm. But she's only using them for emphasis, not dialogue. And I think that's the thing that got Yeah, it jangled. starts in Grandpa's that's voice. That's why I got jangled, right? Yeah. Got it. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it's, you know, there's no quotation marks, and it's, mm-hmm. it's still is. And another thing, as he splits open a warm loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. So... You, you know, I mean, the he is also the one who just said and another thing. Right. 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 But it's the speaker who says pleased with the crackle of the crust, meaning it's that hovering third person perspective. Right. Mm-hmm. Like the speaker's able to be in the mind of that that man without speaking in the first person. Right. No. Well, well I wouldn't. And, that and another thing is exactly what he's saying. Right. right. As he splits open. So there's so she's shift just out. telling us what's happening. Exactly. Right. So right, it's right. Like, like reporting on what this guy is saying. Is saying. Right. Well, so the, you said be in the mind yeah, of him. She doesn't pleased, have to be. He's saying it. But pleased with the crackle of crust. Oh, right, right, right. That's true. Slips into his judgment. Right. But either either way, I, I think the big point here is that the italics are not used for dialogue. Quotations marks are not used for dialogue. It's the, the italics are only used for emphasis. And I think that's what part of what threw me. Yeah. And maybe like, you know, in that first part to take action damn it and why tell me to do things and then say thank you right right see yeah so yeah, yeah. readers you're just gonna have to go look at the page oh it's a lovely scrap yeah. <laughs> lovely scrap indeed but I'm yeah. really curious um, to know what what um, what you think about the the images right like what is oh, it okay well, here's this your one images, does have Tim. The images now I'm yeah. not I, I have to say <laughs> the the bread image is a little complicated for me because I'm not sure if a warm loaf of bread, the crust crackles, because it's usually soft enough to not crackle. <laughs> no, 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 I, I know don't think it. it. Certain breads would definitely have a crackly crust. But right I, out of the I'm oven. willing to let it go because I think it's so important to include bread into many poems and stories. I think it's yeah. you should never go so you should never go too long without having your characters <laughs> eat something good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's very important. Or eat something bad, but eat something good or bad. Something that you can identify with. So that uh, that quickly draws me into it. Whether I, I agree with the crackle of crust or not, I'm still in there with the bread. And I love the uh, sit down, thank you image of that person talking and telling you how to. And I, f- I feel like this is almost sort of biblical in a way where you should say you should demand things that are worthy of being demanded, but it's something that shouldn't be abused. You shouldn't be a jerk about. Mm-hmm. It's not. He's not saying to be a jerk. Just the please or the please may I business. All that is nonsense. Mm-hmm. I like that um, because really, please and the may I stuff is all for people who don't know how to say it the right way. Mm-hmm. It's all. It's kind of for dummies. It's like it's like a musical right. notes on the page. That's for people who can't remember how to play it. Right. Highway signs for people who don't right. know. Exactly. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So then we get the. Um, so yeah, I like. I guess the five hundred miles to escape the enemy army. I I mm-hmm. I have a kind of desire to want to know where like the context of this but um for me this is the images are great and they're the type of images that uh balance out what was lacking in the other poem Mm -hmm. for me it's not like uh and the, the the writer's also not telling us how to feel um i love at the end where the the baby says hold me and you know, as a parent, mm-hmm. you're carrying kids all the time, and there's a certain point where you're like, "Oh my gosh, I, I got to not lift so many things." Mm-hmm. You know, it just kind of mm-hmm. it kind of makes you a little weary, and then you realize, in this poem, it makes you realize what a what a privilege it is mm-hmm. to pick kids up. Mm-hmm. You know, and just to well, your job is to get stronger, right? Mm-hmm. You just have to keep mm-hmm. picking kids up. I love the um, the intergeneration intergeneration mm-hmm. play here too that um, he refers to his father knowing how to do it and taking peaches from his neighbor right mm-hmm. and and they're you know uh, toward the end 
uh, he dips his piece in fragrant olive oil, the grass of his childhood unfurling beneath our feet. So they're at his family home, mm-hmm. right? And the baby runs up. Mm-hmm. So we get four generations here, right. yeah. you know, and That's it's right. just so subtly and artfully done that it's this, the family lineage is to mm-hmm. learn how to take what you want. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's I, great. I, I dig that That's so lot. great. Yeah. And I love how, you know, we, we read the poem by Rosemary Kitchen on how to cauterize. <laughs> and Jessica Pierce is, you know, just by happenstance and yes. accident and glitter, right? It was so magic. How to take what you want, right? Like, it's this. These, we have another these, draft. These, I didn't even realize how that. How-to poems have, are with the us today. The how-to episode. Exactly. How to be sparkly. How to take what you want. That's how it's done. Yeah. No please, no thank you. And you, side note. Hold right? me. My husband uh, has his last his New Year's resolution from last year was to um, not hold back on taking the last bite if he wanted the last bite. <laughs> so when you're out to dinner with people and there's always like that last piece of like gorgeous cheese and tomato and everything, he's like, no, 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 I'm full, I'm full. He's like, okay, I'm gonna take it, <laughs> and not you know, no decorum, right? Yeah, so, yeah. If you want to take it. <laughs> Yeah. And all, I mean, of course, food always makes things luscious, right? Mm-hmm. All of these, the peach, the walnut, the brown bread, apricot right. reserves, like, you yeah. know, that's preserves. So that's just lovely, yeah. um, right. delicious, no pun intended. Right. Words and to Tim's to point on, on the way food works, right? Mm-hmm. To sort of conjure all those senses mm-hmm. in the reader. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I can just so see that grandpa scooping up that little baby. Mm-hmm. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. And she I like how knows. He, the, the poem doesn't get too cute with that either. Yeah. No, not Because there's nothing at all. worse than cute. Yeah. It's just a lovely <laughs> moment. It's just yeah. a, it's a great moment. Because kids are like that, right? Juice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I get just to come back again to the sort of like technical um, business here. I yep. think what threw me in that ending are actually the line breaks, right? Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, but now, like now that I have that reading in my head, I can't see it any different way, right? She runs towards us. Hold me. No, please. Line break. No, may I? Space, comma, space. And he grins as he reaches down for her. So, like that, that there's a, some weird work she's doing with spaces between commas and periods. I don't know if you all noticed it. Yeah. Like up in some of the italics in the top of the poem, and um, I, I'm thinking a little bit of of Jen's Jennifer Knox's comments of being about a fuddy duddy. But there's something going on with those spaces, and I don't know if that's a mistake or not. Because <laughs> it could even be ours. Right? I was ready to say like, don't talk oh, too much about this. Because it could be we... ours and transfer. Yeah, I don't oh, remember. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, yeah. very good. Um, but yeah, so I'm, but you know, anyway, I'm a convert. Thank you. Yeah, you know what else I just saw? Mm-hmm. Rooted in the dirt of crumbled gods and goddesses. Mm-hmm. So there is just like history, right? These mm-hmm. We've got four generations, gods and goddesses. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be, it could have been ruined with sentimentality. True. And it isn't. It's all just very well crafted and well done, I think. And I like a poem that starts with, and another thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, I like the sort of precondition of that. Yeah. Like, it's imagining yeah. something else. It's like starting a poem with so, right? So then, right? Like, yeah. right, like right, what, right. what just happened over there? Like, that I'm, I'm coming in mm-hmm. on, right? So, yeah. I like that. Yeah. That gesture. My uh, old roommate from college, we still call each other. <laughs> and when the other one... Pr- person picks up we go and then <laughs> we don't say hello we just start just with and then <laughs> we just start talking that's good yeah that's good. Right. hi marcy mm-hmm. she listens sometimes. hi marcy hello let's um do this thing right ready mm-hmm. ready to vote mm-hmm. one two three vote and that's and it's how it's unanimous. done <laughs> That's how it's done, That's Jessica Pierce. Thank you so much. This was a three for three episode, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two poets, three pieces. Yeah. All Exciting in. times. All in 2018. 2018 is the way to roll. <laughs> yeah. The year of glitter bombs. Glitter bombs. <laughs> glitter bombs. Mm-hmm. And fairy dust. And the dog. And the dog. And the dog. Lunar this is the year of the dog. Right. I oh, believe so, yeah. Head, oh. I thought you were referring to our head oh, tilt. Oh, and the head tilt. The, the head tilt. <laughs> oh, the head tilt. The curious dog. Yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. And you know what? I, can I just um, speak to something? You know, mm-hmm. we were talking about Tim and his love of imagery, and I didn't want to. I like to call it timidry. Timidry. So we're um, I didn't want to sully the poems, either Jessica Pierce's poems, with making everybody remember this. But do you remember how desperately Tim wanted to hear more about the man's hemorrhoids? <laughs> and uh, and the short story, a short we'll, we'll, Alex Pickett we'll, story. We'll tag back yeah. to it. Um, mm. Who was the author? Alex Pickett. You're the best. To remember mm. that. We'll tag back to it on the podcast page mm-hmm. for this episode. Uh, we discussed a short story, and Tim was really frustrated by the tubes of preparation age right. without description of the hemorrhoid itself and or the pain mm. of said hemorrhoid. And the rest of us were kind of okay without that. Uh-huh. And Tim was asking for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Careful he likes, to, he likes yeah. to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no ambiguity for Tim. No, no. Um, if you're going to write about hemorrhoids, give us the hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a hemorrhoid. Yeah. I would be without uh, nobody a hemorrhoid. Wants a hemorrhoid. I would be without it. I know that I'm the one that would be without it. We <laughs> started the episode with glitter and with hemorrhoids. Yeah. And I know that I'm the one that did it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. And like I guess there's always reality floating underneath there. <laughs> And scene. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I would like to thank our poets for today, and I would like to thank everybody in the room. Yay. And Joe Zhang, our fabulous sound engineer. Joe. And I would like to cajole our listeners into uh, contacting us and let us know what you think about this episode, every episode, what should we do next, all of those things. Find us on all uh, platforms, all the basics, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And, um, of course, we have straight-up email as well if you would like straight to just send up, us a note and be email. straight up, be professional about it. Mm-hmm. We will read your email. Mm-hmm. So um, thank you. So keep listening and read on. Yeah. Woo!